Well, what are you thankful for today? I'm asking you this because, you know, we just left the Thanksgiving holiday. We just had Thanksgiving. You stuffed yourself full of turkey. You probably Amen. watched the Cowboys game and or, or watched them lose, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Or, uh, and watched all that. Maybe you had family, friends. Maybe you like my wife and she likes to watch the Hallmark movie Christmas shows. She's already started in, you know, a month ago with Hallmark. But uh, get in preparation of that. Now, now you're getting probably your house ready to the putting up ornaments yeah, and trees right. and, and stuff. I know my wife uh, had me helping her out yesterday. The whole family we had pitched in and, and decorating our house. So what does Thanksgiving mean to you? Is it a, a time of preparation just right before the Thanksgiving holiday? Or is it the day that you stuff yourself and watch football games and then have Black Friday specials and, <laughs> and, and, and go beat somebody up over a TV? <laughs> Amen. What is Thanksgiving to you? Mm-hmm. Author and poet Henry David Thoreau said this, I am grateful for what I have. My thanksgiving is perpetual. Yes, yes. The first European settlers in America that we definitively know about, there's other groups that came in. The, the, there's historical evidence of the Vikings and even yes. the Knights Templar coming to North America, Nova Scotia and all that. Mm-hmm. Especially if you watch the, on the History Channel, the, the Curse of Oak Island, you watch how they're digging treasure and they're finding out a lot of that's from... Uh, Knights Templar coming to North America, but mm-hmm. but the, what we know historically, uh, the first European settlers uh, uh, were the early pilgrims. Now, the early pilgrims were not land-hungry, murdering, thieving, evil people that, that, that killed all the Native American Indians to have the land. Other peoples did that for sure mm-hmm. in history, but not the pilgrims. The pilgrims came... They were escaping religious persecution from yes. England and all the laws, religious laws, and they wanted to be able to worship God in the manner they so chose. So they left there on September 6, 1620, and braved two months on a storm tossed sea, mm-hmm. finally making it at the wrong place. But they landed in Plymouth Rock and they disembarked. And before they disembarked, they made the Mayflower Compact, compact and I'll read that to you in just a moment. But after they disembarked, they, they had a Thanksgiving service, and, and then they tried to build shelters, and they had the harsh winter upon them, and they were ill-prepared mm-hmm. to be able to manage that, that harsh New England weather. Mm-hmm. And nearly half of them died, one, over 100 left, and only 52 remained. Mm-hmm. And so it was that they, after that winter, they made a relationship with the, the Wampapog, Wamp. Anog Indians, and they had Samoset and uh, Squanto uh, meeting up with them, and they befriended them, and they taught them how to live in the new world, and they taught them how to farm the land. And in fact, uh, it says that Squanto lived with them to the day he died, and he became a Christian. Mm-hmm. He wanted to live with them to learn their ways and also to teach them how to live in the new land. Mm-hmm. And it, then finally, in December of 1621, they had that first Thanksgiving feast. Yes. And it was a three-day feast, and it had shellfish and deer and turkey, and they had corn, and they played games with the Indians. They invited uh, 90 from the tribe to come uh, mm-hmm. to be with them, and, and they had this a wonderful celebration. It wasn't a time of killing and murder and, and genocide. It was a time of thanksgiving and praise. Amen. Mm-hmm. What does thanksgiving mean to you today? What does it mean to you? I'm reminded, though, of the fact that that first time when the pilgrims landed was in 1620. Mm-hmm. Nearly 400 years to date. 400 years. Now, God works through numbers. And I've heard one theologian said, uh, I was watching YouTube and I was watching his sermon. And he was talking about numbers. He was talking about prophecy. And, and he says it's, it's amazing how God works in cycles and numbers are important to God, 3 and 40 and 7 and 6 and 30 and 70 and 4 and 400. In fact, the Egyptians had bondage over, over that of the Hebrew people for 430 years. And they left uh, for, after that 430-year period. Mm-hmm. But so it's, it's almost like 400 years to date. And the 400 years ago, those pilgrims had to endure a harsh winter and nearly half of them died. They suffered. To that first winter, and it seems like we're suffering today through the COVID virus. Amen. And we have our plague upon ourselves. Mm-hmm. But those first pilgrims, the pilgrims wrote in their Mayflower, Mayflower Compact 
They said, have an undertaken for the glory of God and advancement of the Christian faith to the honor of king and country, a voyage to plant at this first colony. Mm -hmm. They had in mind to first thank God for all that they'd been through. First of all, probably they kissed the ground, right, of that storm-tossed sea on those uh, wooden boats across Amen. sailing vessels across the sea. But what about you? What are you thankful for today? What is it you're thankful for? As we read earlier in Colossians chapter 3, that's the Apostle Paul's letter to the church at Colossae. He's writing around 61 AD. He's imprisoned. Mm -hmm. He's taken his case before Nero, mm -hmm. the, the Caesar who blamed, burned Rome and blamed the Christians for it. Mm -hmm. and, he's, and, and here Paul is writing this. He's under home arrest, under his own dime, renting a house, and a Roman guard is watching over him. Because he had a rights to, as a Roman citizen, he had those rights. That's why he wasn't in, in a damp, dark dungeon. Mm -hmm. They appealed to his rights as a Roman citizen to be treated fairly. And so he's in a rented house, under guard, in lock and key. But he's under house arrest. And he's writing this letter. He wanted to show himself up to go to the, the Colossian church one day. And they were expecting him to show there mm -hmm. in, in person. But he couldn't be with them in person. So he had to write this letter. He didn't have email. He didn't have Facebook. He didn't have mm -hmm. TV, but he had the pen and parchment paper. And as he wrote it down, these words, can you imagine Apostle Paul writing this probably with tears in his eyes, knowing that soon he may be facing, and knowing who Caesar was at the time, Nero, pretty insane guy, mm -hmm. that his end would come. And he would never see the beloved Christian church again. Mm -hmm. So listen to me and follow along in your Bibles. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 through 17, I'll read it to you again. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, mm -hmm. kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the shalom peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to shalom peace. And be thankful. Mm -hmm. Let the word of Christ dwell within you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitudes, gratitude in your hearts to God, just like Theo sang. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father, through him. Amen. What does Thanksgiving mean to you? Is Thanksgiving about turkey? Pumpkin pie or pecan pie or cheesecake? Or is it about, you know, the family gatherings or the football? You know, all the fixings, the pilgrims. What does Thanksgiving truly mean to you? On October 3rd, 1789, President George Washington issued a decree with the full support of Congress, that on Thursday, 26 November, 1789, would be a day of public thanksgiving and fasting and prayer. Mm -hmm. And let me read to his words. Uh, it, sometimes we forget that it all started back with the pilgrims, but also the first president, George Washington, issued this day. He wrote this, By President of the United States of America, a proclamation whereas the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey his will, to be grateful for his benefits, and humbly implore his protection mm -hmm. and favor. And whereas both houses of Congress have, and their joint committee, requested to me to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer, mm -hmm. to observe by acknowledging with grateful hearts and many signals of favor of Almighty God, especially by affording them opportunity to peacefully establish a form of government for their own safety and happiness. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, I do recommend and assign Thursday, 26th day of November next to be devoted by the people of these states to service of that great and glorious being who is the benefic bene beneficent author of all who good that was or is and will be, mm -hmm. that we may un all unite rendering unto him our sincere and humble thanks for his kind care and protection of the people of this country previous to their becoming a nation. This is President George Washington. Now, before that time, then General George Washington, one of the things he wanted to do after the Continental Congress is 
had commissioned him to be commander-in-chief of all the military, our continental troops, he wanted chaplains in his military. He wanted them to be embedded with the troops, and it was by Congress on July 29th, 1775, that chaplains were a vital part of that army. Mm -hmm. And it was at Valley Forge on December 18th, 1777, that the chaplain, Reverend Israel Evans, of the New Hampshire Brigade, preached a sermon at Valley Forge. Mm -hmm. And they issued a day of fasting, a time of fasting and prayer before the battle. And that was a time where they just devoted themselves to the Lord mm -hmm. in thanksgiving and prayer. General Washington was not at that service, but the chaplain gave him the copy of his sermon where the, you know, the General Washington thanked him for his kind words. And some people say, well, General Washington was, uh, George Washington was a deist. Mm -hmm. He wasn't a deist. He was a faithful Anglican uh, parishioner who read, often spent times and hours in deep meditation and prayer and reading the sermons and reading books on, on theology. And he was uh, someone who just spent, he was a stoic Christian. Mm -hmm. He was, uh, kept it quiet within him. But he was a Christian nonetheless, an Anglican. What does Thanksgiving mean to you today? The word can bring so many connotations of our lives, right? What we're going through here in during the 2020, this weird world that we live in today, mm -hmm. all the stuff's going on politically, all the stuff's going on with the health crisis and the mm -hmm. pandemic, and all that we are going through, what does Thanksgiving mean to you today? What is it you're truly thankful for today? What is it in your life that you can give praise and glory to God to thank Him for? Mm -hmm. Some of you are probably sitting there saying, well, Jacqueline, you don't know what, you're, what I've been through. I've lost my job. I don't, uh, you know, my family's sick. I've lost loved ones. People have died because of this COVID virus. We're suffering and all the turmoil on the streets and turmoil and political crisis going on around the world. The stock market crashing or I've lost my business. But I do know that God is still leading us through. Amen. That's right. <clears throat> the early Christians suffered. The early pilgrims of this nation suffered. Our country in its Revolutionary War, the people suffered mm -hmm. under the hand of tyranny under Britain at that time. There's suffering going on throughout the world, throughout all history and time. Amen. You look to the greats in the Bible. Good Joseph, of how much he suffered. Mm -hmm. Look at how, how everyone suffered. The Apostle Paul is suffering. Mm -hmm. And would soon, his life would be ended and be executed for his faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We all go through times and trials in our life and, and times of suffering. But in those times of suffering, in those times of turmoil, can we be thankful? Amen. And what can we be thankful for? What can we truly be thankful for in life? Now, the Apostle Paul uses thankfulness in three different grammatical ways. First is an adjective. Secondly, a verb. And then last, a verb participle, a action verb. First, let's talk about that adjective. What is the adjective? We are to be thankful toward the noun who the subject is Jesus Christ. Amen. We are to be thankful for what Jesus has done in our life in the present tense. Mm -hmm. We are to be thankful for him. Is your life a reflection of thankfulness? So Christ needs to rule in our hearts. Yeah. As the Apostle Paul says, holy and beloved, compassion. We have all these attributes. Kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Intercession, forgiveness, loving, being, and bound in unity and peacefulness. All these should be attributes of our life. They should be that adjective in our life describing who we are. Yes. And our life in turn needs to be an adjective describing Christ inside reflecting in us. Mm -hmm. That our life, we live it such a way that it describes Jesus inside of me. It's I who no longer lives, but what? Christ. Jesus Christ Amen. lives mm -hmm. inside of me. And a perfect example of that is found in Luke chapter 17, verse 11 through 19, where you have these 10 lepers. They're, you know, they're in Samaria, and Jesus is walking on the DMZ between the border, but along the border of, between Galilee and Samaria, and he sees these lepers, and they see Jesus, and they know who Jesus is, and they see the stories. They've heard the stories of Jesus, and they come running as far as they could go, but they know they're not allowed toward anybody who's clean that was forbidden in that time of culture, and there was a law against it. 
And they said, Jesus, heal us. Heal us, Jesus. Make us clean. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, go show yourself into the priest. You shall be clean. I can imagine as they're walking away from Jesus, they did exactly what Jesus told them, told them to do. And they go to the priest. And I can imagine they're, they're broken, they're falling off appendages, they start growing back together, their, their diseased skin is falling off, and, and they're limping and starts walking straight again. And, they're, and then they start running to the priest and they show themselves and they're so thankful, they're praising God. Amen. <clears throat> but only one of that ten mm -hmm. comes back. And even Jesus... Didn't Jesus even say, hey, where are the others? Mm -hmm. we're, the, we're not all ten healed. Well, Where are the other nine? Mm -hmm. Only one comes back and shows me gratitude. What is, is your life showing gratitude to God? Are you like the nine? Or are you like the one? Mm -hmm. Majority of the people are like the nine, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus heals them, does something miraculous in life, and they go on living their life, not really stopping to give thanks. Thanks for what he has done in our life. Amen. I encourage each and every one of you here today to live a life of thankfulness, to live it perpetual in your life. Never stop thanking him for what he has done. A lot of times we open up our prayers to him, and what do we do in prayer? We just say, God, yeah, help me this, help me that. Mm -hmm. Give me this, give me that. Mm -hmm. Our God loves to bless. He's our heavenly father, right? Amen. He wants to bless us, right. but he also wants us to praise him, yes. to thank him. Mm -hmm. To be grateful for what he has given us Amen. in life. Amen. To show that gratitude, that appreciation, that thankfulness in our life. Secondly, you got the verb. You got gratitude in your hearts to God. Now this is, word is linked with singing. It's kind of like Gene Kelly singing in the rain. You have such thankfulness and gratitude in your heart to God that you are singing literally all the day long for him. Amen. You ever driving down the road and you turn on a worship song and you start praising the Lord and, and you just get really into the spirit of things and the, the people kind of think you're crazy because there's nobody in the car, but you're just really praising the Lord. Amen. I've seen people do that with rock music and the different genres of music that they love. Mm -hmm. They're just huh, singing along and they're driving around they're having fun in the car by themselves. Mm -hmm. Can't we be that way for God? Amen. If you can go to a football stadium and, and everybody strip off their clothes, you know, bare-chested, and they put their numbers on their favorite players and they're screaming like that. Why can't we do that for the Lord every day? To show him and praise him with our singing. It says with all psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, we need to reflect that praise to God. Psalm 63 verse 5 says this, I will fully be satisfied with the riches of foods and singing of my lips and my mouth will praise you. Amen. Amen. But our God loves us. Do you know our God's a singer? He's a worshiper. He loves you. Amen. The Bible says in Zephaniah chapter 3, 16 and 17, On that day they will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. And his love, he will have no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. Amen. The Hebrew word for rejoice in that is to dance with a twirl. Can you imagine God just literally dancing over your life? Amen. Doesn't the Bible even say that when one sinner re uh, repents, all the heaven is rejoicing and there's Amen. a party in heaven thrown in your honor as you repent of your sins? The day you accepted Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior, there was a great party in heaven for you. Can you imagine that? Can you picture that? So that, well, that's why we can show gratitude. We can be thankful for what he has given us. And lastly, Amen. is that giving thanks, that verb participle, which says, you know, it's a, it's, uh, Fritz Rineker says this, the word indicates an obligation of being thankful to someone and a favor done. Mm -hmm. Thankfulness arises out of grace of God for that which he has done in our lives. For God's mm -hmm. love the world, what? That he gave. Yes. It's present. It's ongoing. Mm -hmm. We're living our life for him in that time of thanksgiving. How many of you are truly thankful for what he has done in our lives? That you're living it out, that thankfulness, every day of your life. Charles Spurgeon says this of Thanksgiving. He says, I think it's a better rendering. To say, instead of Thanksgiving, it's thanks living. Mm -hmm. How is this to be done? By cheerfulness of manner and obedience to the command of him whose mercy we live, by perpetual and constant delight of ourselves in the Lord, and by submission of our desires to his will. It's a time of Thanksgiving to surrender and to live it all for Jesus. Amen. All to Jesus. I surrender all to him I freely give. Amen. 
Amen. Do we truly mean those words? All to Jesus? Sometimes we, I think we're really saying some to Jesus. Jesus, you can have this part of my life, but you can't have that. Jesus, you can have this, but you can't have that. Mm. All to Jesus, I surrender. I'm going to give Jesus my finances. I'm going to give Jesus my bank account. I'm going to give Jesus my TV watching time. I'm going to give to Jesus what I watch on Netflix or Hulu. I'm going to give to Jesus what I'm watching uh, when nobody else is looking. I'm going to give Jesus my thought life. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give Jesus the desires of my heart. I'm going to give Jesus everything. Why? Because he gave it all for us. He loves you. He's crazy about you. And he wants a relationship with you today. How many of you are truly thankful for what he has given you? For what he has done in your life? Are you reflecting that thankfulness today? What does Thanksgiving mean to you? And as we go from Thanksgiving into the Advent season, and we're celebrating Jesus and his birth, and his coming to this world to save us from our sins, Mm -hmm. from a manger to the cradle to the cross, Mm -hmm. what does Jesus mean to you? What does Thanksgiving of him mean to you today? It is my prayer that you will be touched by him and truly be able to thank him in all things. Say, Jesus, thank you for what you have done. No matter how much I'm suffering on this earth, I will still praise you. I will still praise you no matter what. Because I know that there's a hope. There's a future. There's a greater glory ahead of me. There's an eternal glory, an eternal kingdom that will await for me one day. Amen. If I'm only steadfast and hold on. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you touch our lives right here and right now. Fill us full of your spirit, full of your word, full of your passion, full of your, your presence. Help us never forget you in our lives. And Lord, I pray that you just use us as a mighty, powerful way, an example to this world. How to truly be a, live a life of thanksgiving no matter what happens on this earth. That you lead us out of darkness. You lead us out of the valleys of the shadow of death. You lead us out of suffering and trials and tribulations. You lead us out to hope and a future beyond. Thank you, Lord, for guiding our hand. Thank you, Lord, for being with us this day. Thank you for dying on the cross for us, Jesus. In your holy name we pray.